leaving. My lisp is gone. In Liar Liar, Jim Carrey trips on the sidewalk while running towards his ex-wife's house. The fall was a complete accident and not in the script, but it fit perfectly wait, with the scene, wait, wait, so they kept it in the movie. Oh. Hold on, wait, wait! Kisses. <laughs> in Me, Myself, and Irene, the scene where Jim Carrey's character asks his sons to kiss him before he leaves was ad-libbed. One of them looks obviously surprised. You can tell the guy at the end was the least cool with it. In Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, Jim Carrey's spontaneous sneeze on the African guide during a line was unscripted. <laughs> the director enjoyed the moment so much that he decided to keep it in the final cut. Till the white man came. Dry <laughs> land is not a myth! I've seen it! In The Cable Guy, Jim Carrey's character, Chip Douglas, is known for his memorable lisp. During the climactic fight scene with Matthew Broderick's character, Chip gets punched and suddenly loses his lisp. You're gonna have to do better than that, Steven! This moment was not scripted. Carrie genuinely forgot to use it. Instead of stopping the scene, he went with it, creating one of the film's most memorable moment. My lisp is gone! In The Mask, there's a scene where Jim Carrey's character uses a frisbee to shovel money into a closet. Milo the dog wasn't supposed to grab onto the frisbee, but he did anyway. Carrie improvised and went along with it, and that take ended up in the final cut. I'll be right there! In The Truman Show, where Truman draws a soap astronaut suit on the mirror, was inspired by Jim Carrey's real-life morning routine. Carrie revealed that he would often draw soap masks or even full outfits at home, and then put his face into them. Proclaim this planet, Trumania. He also did another take, where he instead drew long curly hair and a dress. But it was the Trumania take that made the final cut. That one's for free. Carrie ad-libbed a ton of the funniest lines in Dumb and Dumber. For example, he didn't originally have a line when he was leaving the hotel bar, but he improvised by looking at the framed 1969 newspaper and saying, No way! That's great! We landed on the moon! In another scene from Dumb and Dumber, Jim Carrey improvised the awkward moment outside the gas station to mess with two random men who weren't even paid extras. They just happened to be outside the 7-Eleven where they were shooting the scene. Hey guys! Oh, big golfs, huh? All right. Well, see you later. In How the Grinch Stole Christmas, one afternoon on set, Carrey stole director Ron Howard's hat and started doing an impression of him and his directing style. Reject your own nose because it represents the glitter of commercialism. Howard found it so amusing that he added a scene where the Grinch directs Max on how to be a reindeer, all of which was ad libbed. If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one. In Ace Ventura Pet Detective, the moment where Ace pulls the cellist's arm, causing him to play a false note, was completely improvised by Jim Carrey. <laughs> In The Mask, Jim Carrey improvised the moment where the character pulls out a condom during the balloon-making scene. Sorry, wrong pocket. <laughs> he also ad-libbed the heart-shaped cigarette puff and the arrow shot from his nose in the Frenchman scene, making it a rare example of a spontaneous moment involving special effects. In Fun with Dick and Jane, Jim Carrey hangs from the ceiling to hide from an employee. When he accidentally misses the desk while dropping down and falls to the floor, he doesn't break character. Instead, Carrie quickly recovers and grabs the printout he was after, and it was kept as well. In Yes Man, the Can't Buy Me Love scene, where Jim Carrey and Zoe Deschanel sing together, wasn't scripted. The cameras kept rolling, capturing the spontaneous moment and natural chemistry between the actors. Say you don't need those diamond rings, and I'll be satisfied. In Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, Jim Carrey's infamous talking out of the butt scene came from an improv bit he created on the set of Living Color. Excuse me, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Frustrated by Keenan Ivory rejecting his sketch ideas, Carrey jokingly read one out using his backside, nearly causing a fight between the two. Later, when Carrey suggested using the bit in Ace Ventura, the director agreed it would fit in a scene at the police station. Do you have a mint? Perhaps some banaka? While some people found it hilarious, it did cause a few test audience members to walk out. Thank you for all your cooperation. Ready? On nine. In Me, Myself, and Irene, when Charlie and Irene push the car off the cliff, Jim Carrey says on nine and counts to nine very fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This was ad-libbed 
and for a moment, Renee Zellweger looks obviously surprised. Our parents just died. In Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, during the scene where Klaus says, Our, our parents, parents just, just died, died, Jim Carrey, staying in character as Count Olaf, asked if he could retake his line because he forgot the next one. Wait, let me do that one more time. Give me the line again. The cameras kept rolling, and Carrey's seamless ad lib made it into the final cut of the film. Let me do that one more time. Give me the line again. Quickly, while well, it's fresh in my mind. But what would I wear? In How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the scene where the Grinch rips a tablecloth off without disturbing a single dish was entirely improvised by Jim Carrey. The original plan was for him to create a huge mess, but when everything stayed perfectly in place, Carrey played along, ad-libbing his way through the scene. In The Cable Guy during the Medieval Times dinner scene, Jim Carrey humorously references Anthony Hopkins' famous line from The Silence of the Lambs. Hello, Clarice. It's good to see you again. He covers his face with chicken skin and out. delivers the line, which causes laughter not only from the audience, but also from his co-star Matthew Broderick, who was caught off guard by the improvisation. Hello, Clarice. It's good to see you again. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> One of the most memorable scenes in Ace Ventura, when nature calls, is when Ace starts singing the theme song to Chitty Chitty Bang Bang while on his way to the consulate. Freddy Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, we love you and are. This moment happened because Jim Carrey forgot his lines and began ad-libbing the song. Since both actors stayed in character without breaking, director Steve Odekirk loved it and decided to keep it in the final cut. Our fine four bandered, Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Bang Bang, yeah! Did you know the most annoying sound scene in Dumb and Dumber is one of the film's funniest moments, and it was entirely improvised by Jim Carrey. This wasn't scripted, but happened spontaneously during filming. Jeff Daniels, who usually stuck to the script, decided to follow Carrey's lead, saying, when in doubt, repeat Jim. The crew was reportedly caught off guard, with many struggling to hold back laughter during the take. In Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, Jim Carrey tried to create memorable catchphrases like Holy Testicle Tuesday! Alrighty then. According to director Tom Shadyak, Carrey came up with these lines on the spot, hoping they would become popular. And they did. Alrighty then! In Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, during the circus scene, Kate Winslet was asked to disappear without Jim Carrey's knowledge. The result was a truly authentic reaction, as Carrie can be seen genuinely looking for her with a saddened expression. In How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Jim Carrey improvised many of the Grinch's funniest lines, including the iconic dinner with me excuse. In this scene, the Grinch hilariously lists his busy schedule to avoid returning to Whoville. 5.30, jazzercise. 6.30, dinner with me. I can't cancel that again. In Sonic the Hedgehog, Jim Carrey fully improvised Dr. Robotnik's dance scene and also suggested the song Where Evil Grows, which he remembered from his childhood. 